Okay, we're back and we're doing some e &M. And in particular, uh, this is something with Faraday's Law. Um, it's the, the case where instead of having like a, a loop or a circuit that you're moving through a magnetic field and getting all that weird induction stuff to happen, what if it's just a stick by itself? So there, there's no real circuit, so you can't sustain a current, but you're still moving a conductor through a magnetic field. What we've been saying all along is if, if you do this, you know, we can at least think about this conceptually, that um, because it's metal, because it's a conductor, it has those free electrons okay, floating around inside of it. So if you're moving it inside of a magnetic field, QV cross B kicks on. So what that would mean in this picture right here, if magnetic field's going, say, into the screen, uh, the right-hand rule, if you do QB cross B, says that um, positive charges would feel a force moving up. But because because there's ends to this, the, the, those positive charges, if they could move, could only move so far. And they get stuck and they start collecting on that top side, uh, the top end of this little metal rod. Electrons, of course, move the other way, and the left-hand rule says they move downwards. But they get stuck on the, the bottom end of the stick. So literally, you, you do have a current um, because of QV cross B, but it's not sustained. Um, eventually, these charges get stuck on the two sides, and the stick polarizes. Okay, so you've, you've induced a dipole on the stick as, you, as long as you're moving it. Um, now because of that, at some point, it's going to hit equilibrium where there, there's no more um, current, there's no more charges moving through that little rod. And the reason for this is, if, when you think about it, you, you have a magnetic force moving upwards. Okay, that's our QB cross B from the right hand rule. But what's weird about this is that as soon as you turn on, or as soon as you start collecting these charges and polarize the thing, you start to set up an electric field going from positive to negative. I, I drew that in red. So that's an electric force, QE, going down that way. So the more charges you build up, the stronger that electric force becomes. As long as you're moving this at a constant speed, uh, QV cross B is going to remain constant. So at some point, you have a case where that electric force balances the magnetic force, and you have equilibrium. Okay, so it looks like the, the charge is going to drop out in that case. But now if you think about it, um, the, the reason you have this electric field, in order to have electric field, means you have a voltage difference. Okay, and let's see now, if, if the stick has a certain length to it, we'll just call it L, um, we could rewrite the electric field as voltage difference divided by the length of the rod. Okay, because remember, um, electric field is related to, you can think of it as a change in voltage over a change in distance. Okay, that's our gradient. Well, you set up a voltage gradient here by separating the charges. So the moving rod wants to act like a battery, basically, because <laughs> you get this voltage difference. And if you solve for the voltage difference, you need to be careful with these Vs here, um, the voltage difference is the magnetic field times the length of the rod times the speed of the rod. Okay, And I'll even put a, a minus sign in there because of the fact that um, this electric force is, is opposite what the magnetic force is trying to do. So it's really weird. Um, the, this motion, this polarization, makes this moving rod act like a battery. It produ it's as if you've, you've induced this voltage. Okay, that's Faraday's law. Now, even though we don't have flux, necessarily, because we don't have a loop, okay, we don't have an area 
where we're changing the flux, but the moving rod acts like a battery because it's polarized and you have a voltage difference. You get exactly the same result that you get from Faraday's law if you're moving a loop through this thing and are changing the flux. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. It's um, the kind of thing that sometimes will come up um, and we'll, we'll probably take a look at one of the old AP problems that uh, has this effect in it. But in any case, um, I hope this makes sense. It's kind of a neat little idea of, of having this electric field set up uh, through, as a consequence of the magnetic force by moving metal pieces through magnetic fields. So until next time, we'll see you later.